Oh no! I hear one coming! He's getting so close! Breeze, Carla! Don't move! Hold your breath! He's going away! I can keep moving! Thank God you made it out. I don't know what the hell could have happened. The auto lock system opened all of the cell doors. Are you hurt? Are you sure you're all right? Great, Barney. <laughs> I feel great. I love playing hide and seek in the dark with a pack of psychopathic killers. This man I'd barely seen on TV was my last hope. I didn't know what connection there could be between the Mayans and what had happened to me, but at that point, I was ready to accept any explanation that could make sense out of the nightmare that my life had become. Hello, uh, I'm a journalist, and I have an appointment with Professor Kiryakin. The professor's waiting for you. Professor Kiryakin? Yes? My name's John Cunningham. We spoke on the phone. I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. Ah, yes. I've been waiting for you, young man. <laughs> what, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? I write for the New York Times. It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Uh, have we met somewhere before? Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, I guess I must have one of those boring faces everybody sees everywhere. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. You see before you the ancient Mayan god Kweknitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, the second in the other world. By opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. What would you need to do to get the serpent to open its two mouths? A human sacrifice, of course. The liberated soul then opens the passage, and thus the oracle can use this serpent channel to see into the other world. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. This painting, uh, dating from the first century BC, shows a sacrificial ceremony. The victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. The priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. How did the ritual sacrifice work? 
Oh, the Oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. That is why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the Executor. The Oracle takes complete control of the Executor, manipulating him from a distance. What happened to the Executor after the sacrifice? He went mad and committed suicide after accomplishing his part of the ritual. A Mayan sacrifice. That's what it was. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who are you? My name is Lucas Kane. The police are looking for me about a murder that I did not commit, but I was the executor. You're a murderer? I'm innocent. I stabbed someone I'd never seen before, three times, cutting his arteries, just like you described. Do you mean to say that there is a Mayan Oracle still living today? But, but that's completely impossible. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Oh, it's the symbol of Quetzalcoatl. The executors cut this into their own forearms before accomplishing the sacrifice. So, it is true. My God, the Codex was right. The Codex? What are you talking about, Professor? You can't stay here. Your picture is in the paper that the security guard is reading. He's sure to recognize you. Come, let's leave here, and I'll tell you all about it. Thank you for your help, Professor. Professor! The Codex speaks of the coming of a child, a prophet, the answer to all of life's questions. The Oracle kills to find the child. forward to meeting you. 
few men are capable of resisting an oracle. What is there so different about you? The Chroma. You have the Chroma. So that explains it. How did you ever acquire such a power? No matter. What matters is, the time has come for you to die. Why me? Why choose me? Pure chance. The executor is always taken from the crowd. It's a great honor for you to be chosen to serve Kwetnitlan. This is some kind of dream, isn't it? You're not really there in front of me, are you? <laughs> Reality is a notion that doesn't have any meaning where I come from. We are not really here, and yet you will die here. Believe me, this world is just as real as your own. Enough talk. Other matters await my attention. We will see each other again. In the other world. Kibin Tina Quentaune. Listen closely, Lucas. Those who employ the Oracle are searching for a little girl. A perfectly pure soul that's never been incarnated. Her coming was foretold by the most ancient prophecy in human history. She's the one you see in your dreams. You must find her before the Oracle does and put her someplace safe. Hurry, there isn't much time and they are already back on your trail. I must inform you that we are unhappy. Very unhappy. He has escaped you again. First in the museum lot. A big mistake, the museum lot. And then in the wave. What's worse, you showed yourself openly to him. And all for nothing. It's just... I was unaware of certain factors, my lords. Which factors? He possesses the Chroma. That's impossible. Idiocy! How could he possess the Chroma? I know not, but it is a certainty that he does. This is how he resisted my psychic attacks and successfully evaded the police. This could force us to change our plans. This is serious, very serious. That is not all. Someone has intervened. What do you mean? While you were with him in the wave? Yes, my lord. Someone brushed aside all of my attacks on Kane and protected him. It was not one of ours. Certainly not. No. I think it was something else. Its chroma was... different. Another clan? That's impossible. Only we are left. We have a rival. Who searches for the Indigo child as we do. They must not find the child. 
That would be a catastrophe. A disaster. Kane is on their side. Unless they are just using him. He is the key. He sees through our eyes. He must not find the child. You must deal with this problem. Definitively. I have already taken measures. He will be definitively dealt with. And soon. Do not disappoint us. You may leave us. The Oracle is in Marcus's church. There's not a moment to lose. I've got to warn him or he's dead. We should wait, Carla. Backup will be here any minute now. No way. This time I'm gonna get him. That desk guy swore to us that he was in his room and he's not gonna get away. I hope that guy didn't screw up when he said he recognized Kane's photo from the papers. He looked so blind he wouldn't recognize his own mother in a phone booth. We'll find the answer in room 369. Marcus, pick up! Hello, my son. I'll be with you in just a minute. I just need to answer the telephone. St. Paul's Cathedral. Marcus, he's in the church. Don't let him get anywhere near you. Lucas? Is that you, Lucas? What's going on? I don't have time to explain, Marcus. Run, right now. Shut the doors and lock them tight. I'm begging you, just, just do what I say. Oh, come now, Lucas. Just do it, now! I'm locked in. Now, can you explain what's going on? Call the police, and don't come out until they get there. Lucas? 369. Here it is. Either he's gone through some changes since the photo, or this is not him. Shit! What the hell happened? Calm down, girl. I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. Tyler, it was the wrong room! Huh? There must be another room 369 down the hall somewhere. I think the bird has flown the coop. I'm gonna find him, Tyler. I promise you. Come on, let's go. You must realize now that I am not joking. 
So please, don't delay. I'm moving towards my death. Everything that I've been through since the second I entered that diner, all of it was leading me to this moment. I was tired of fighting, running and hiding all the time. I was losing anyway. There was only one thing left to do. Try to save Tiffany's life. And after that, I decided not to fight my destiny anymore. Tiffany, she's at the top of the roller coaster. I have to find a way up there. Enjoy your ride to the other world. 